Hello, Jesse McDougall here. Woke up to a beautiful snowfall today in Vancouver. Awesome. Coming at you with a book review today, Currency Wars by Jim Rickards. Okay. This book is pretty cool, man. I must say, I must say, this came uh, referred to me from another chartered accountant friend, Troy Wong. Thanks, bro. Shout out, holler. Um, this premise of this book is that Jim Rickards predicts, he's a famous financial author, he predicts that the next world war will be a currency war. He predicts that the war will not be fought with troops and soldiers and nukes and missiles on the ground. And a lot of the reason of that is, if you look at World War I and World War II, uh, the worst human atrocities ever existed on the face of the earth and that wasn't that long ago um because of mass weapons of production right so world war three i don't even want to nobody hopes there's a world war three um it would just be we don't even want to speculate what could potentially happen uh it's, it's very very scary so mr rickards predicts that the next war will be a currency war okay so why is this? What could occur? Like, what do you mean currency? Well, that doesn't even make sense. Well, once you dive into this, if you've got a financial background, you got a, you know, economics, it's pretty scary. Uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. That's another good book. I haven't read that one yet. Um, I might get into it, even though I, I kind of, you know, I don't know if I need to know the details. I need to know the details of my internet marketing business or my accounting business or my real estate business. I don't know if I need to know the details of, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, just like you might not need to know the, de uh, sorry, not the definitions, the details, the details of the book. You might not need to know the details of reading Currency Wars, and I'll be honest, this was a very, very challenging book to read. Uh, it was it's highly intellectual, so yeah, it's tough. Anyways, the premise around currencies, you would think, hey, I want a strong US dollar, I want a strong Canadian dollar. Actually, you don't. You really don't. And the premise is you want a low, so China, US, Japan, the EU. There's this silent war going on every single day that they're trying to lower the value of their currency. Hmm. Why is that? Why would people do that? Well, here's why. If you have a lower currency, let's just say, um, Canada is a perfect example right now. For the last few years, we've been at anywhere from 25 to 35% of a U.S. dollar, meaning one U.S. dollar can buy you 1.25 worth of goods and services. So if you're Canadian, you have one dollar that could buy you 75 cents worth of U.S. stuff. If you're a Canadian, are you going to go to the U.S. and buy stuff? No. Why would you? Just buy it here. Buy it in Canada. I'm not going to pay, give you 25 cents because you have some other color money. Hmm, what was that? Um, so devaluing your currency. So exports, uh, production, mass production, exports. So countries want other countries to buy from them. So if, you, if I can buy, if I'm American and I can buy... Say I got one Ameri you know, a thousand American dollars, and I can buy a product from Canada, and actually buy one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars worth of stuff, or I buy it in America, one thousand dollars worth of stuff. Obviously, you're going to buy it in Canada, right? So having a lower currency increases your exports. Okay, in order to export products, you need to produce them. In order to produce them. You need humans and machines. Humans, so production is jobs. That's what Donald Trump always talks about. Uh, he's been talking about his whole campaign. I, was, I said he was going to get elected. Uh, the first day he said he was announced. I also said he had the biggest chance of being assassinated. Um, and I predict, um, and it's already happening, when he gets into, into power, which he is, uh, 
the financial changes he's going to be making. He's a he's a financial tycoon, whether you make fun of him or not. Like you really don't know what you're talking about. He's 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 a genius. He's a tycoon. He's a business titan. Deal with it. Um, so the changes he's making uh, fiscally and financially, I say, are going to reduce the uh, the U.S. dollar and bring the Canadian dollar back to par. And last two weeks, you've I've actually seen the Canadian dollar decline almost three cents on target. It's already happening. So uh, I'm not going to get too much into details. That's enough of the financial lecture for people. I'll probably lose them, but uh, that's that's fine. And we we're thinking of. Uh, stocks and all these complex words and finance and if you get confused you know what break it down to common sense break it down to dollars just like money in your pocket coins in your purse uh think of it that way and uh, break it down to common sense and usually people with fa using fancy words and stuff a lot of times i found they're just trying to not trick you but they're just trying to sound overly intelligent or because i don't think there's anything intelligent if you lose your audience when you're talking to them you, you keep talking over top of them one buzzword I could just see in people's eyes, like I just lose them. So I try not to tech, talk too technical um, all the times, but depends who you're talking to as well. All right, Currency Wars. I gave this book four stars out of five. It's pretty cool, man. Look at the, the logo here. I don't know if you can see because it's snowing in the background, but it's got like these dollar bills and their dollar bills are holding guns and they're shooting one another. And yeah, it's a pretty cool book, man. I uh, this book was definitely worth a read for me because I'm always thinking currency, especially me living in Canada, uh, making U.S. dollar. I make 25. So if I make a dollar in revenue online, I actually make a dollar 20 for a dollar 35 in uh, revenue, which is sweet. I can almost live off the foreign exchange gain. All right, guys, take care. Have a good day. Crush your week. It's the good start of a Monday. I love Mondays. I don't know about you. You get the TGIF. I'm a TGIM. I love Mondays. Mondays. I get to uh, uh, execute my plans or, or thinking over the weekend. Even if I'm out socializing, I'm still thinking about my plans and coming for next week and business hours and uh, you know what small moves I can make to advance my position uh, in the workplace in the world and to achieve my goals. I, I love Mondays. It's always a fresh new week to start your start your goals. Um, thanks. Take care.